Will Mexico's new $4.5 billion project finally end Panama Canal's dominance? Mexico is hard at work on a massive development project that the country's president hopes will rival the Panama Canal. It won't be just another waterway, but when it's finished, the Interoceanic Corridor will connect ports on the Atlantic and Pacific coasts of Mexico in numerous ways. President Andres Manuel López Obrador is looking to the U.S. for support on the project, but indigenous communities are fighting the decision. So, will the Panama Canal's dominance finally come to a halt? Let's find out more. The Panama Canal The Panama Canal is a waterway that connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans across the Isthmus of Panama. It is owned and administered by Panama and is 40 miles long from shoreline to shoreline. President Theodore Roosevelt oversaw the realization of a long-term United States goal, a trans-Ithmian canal. Throughout the 1800s, American and British leaders and businessmen wanted to ship goods quickly and cheaply between the Atlantic and Pacific coasts. To that end, in 1850, the United States and Great Britain negotiated the clayton bulwer Treaty to rein in rivalry over a proposed canal through the Central American Republic of Nicaragua. The Anglo-American Canal, however, never went beyond the planning stages. French attempts to build a canal through Panama advanced further. Led by Ferdinand de Lesseps, the builder of the Suez Canal in Egypt, the French began excavating in 1880. Malaria, yellow fever, and other tropical diseases conspired against the de Lesseps campaign, and after nine years and the loss of approximately 20,000 lives, the French attempt went bankrupt. Despite such setbacks, American interest in a canal continued unabated. The hay ponsfo Treaty of 1901 abrogated the earlier clayton bulwer Treaty and licensed the United States to build and manage its own canal. Following heated debate over the location of the proposed canal, on June 19, 1902, the U.S. Senate voted in favor of building the canal through Panama. Within six months, Secretary of State at the time, John Hay, signed a treaty with Colombian Foreign Minister Tomas Haran to build the new canal. The financial terms were unacceptable to Colombia's Congress, and it rejected the offer. President Roosevelt responded by dispatching U.S. warships to Panama City on the Pacific and Cologne on the Atlantic in support of Panamanian independence. Colombian troops were unable to negotiate the jungles of the Darien Strait, and Panama declared independence on November 3, 1903. The newly proclaimed Republic of Panama immediately named Philippe Bunavarilla, a French engineer who had been involved in the earlier de Lesseps Canal attempt, as envoy extraordinary and minister plenipotentiary. In his new role, Bunavarilla negotiated the Hay Bunavarilla Treaty of 1903 which provided the United States with a 10-mile-wide strip of land for the canal, a one-time $10 million payment to Panama, and an annual annuity of $250,000. The United States also agreed to guarantee Panama's independence. Completed in 1914, the Panama Canal symbolized U.S. technological prowess and economic power. Although U.S. control of the canal eventually became an irritant to U.S.-Panamanian relations, it was heralded as a major foreign policy achievement at the time. The canal shortens the distance between ports on the east and west coasts of the Americas, facilitating more efficient trade and transportation. Around 72% of transiting ships are either going to or coming from U.S. ports. By using the Panama Canal, ships can save considerable time and fuel costs, the shorter transit time reduces the time in transit and enables faster delivery of goods. This benefit is particularly significant for time-sensitive cargoes, perishable goods, and industries with just-in-time supply chains. The canal also plays a crucial role in global supply chains, supporting the movement of various commodities, including dry bulk, container, chemical tankers, LPG carriers, LNG, vehicle carriers, refrigeration cargo, general cargo, and passengers. It takes almost 200 million gallons of water for every ship to transit the Panama Canal. And in a drought, that's become a problem. The Panama Canal operates with a lock system fed via fresh water drawn from Lake Atun. The water flows from the lake, the high point of the canal, down through the lock system and is then discharged to the sea. 
While the canal's newer locks can recycle about 60% of its water, it still requires a tremendous amount of water for every ship to pass through. That's why Mexico's new project may be able to dispatch the over-century-old mega-project. The Interoceanic Corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec Isthmus of Tehuantepec is located in southern Mexico, between the Gulf of Campeche on the Gulf of Mexico to the north and the Gulf of Tehuantepec on the Pacific Ocean to the south. It is broadly acknowledged that Mexico's economic development in recent decades has been uneven, strong in the northern and central regions and weak to the south. Although previous administrations have sought to address this socioeconomic divergence through various initiatives and mechanisms, deep-rooted regional disparity has made it much more complicated than expected to narrow the gap and, as a result, requires further consideration from policymakers. In its National Development Plan, the Government of Mexico presented and described the public policies and projects that it intended to carry out between 2019 and 2024. Many of these projects, as explained, seek to encourage regional economic development and tackle subnational inequalities. One of its most important plans for subnational development is the Program for the Development of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, PDIT, which centers on a narrow strip bridging the southern states of Veracruz and Oaxaca. This program aims to expand the region's economy on the back of a logistical platform known as Interoceanic Corridor. Since taking office in December 2018, President Andreas Manuel López Obrador, a native of the state of Tabasco in the country's south, has made this region a priority in his development agenda. In fact, three out of the four most important infrastructure and development projects of his administration are located in the south. In López Obrador's view, the Interoceanic Corridor in the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, along with the Maya Train and Dos Bocas Refinery in Tabasco projects, is essential to alleviate the pressing socioeconomic problems of the southeastern states and, ultimately, will allow them to catch up with the more competitive and industrialized states in central and northern Mexico. The Isthmus of Tehuantepec has been the subject of renewed interest for many years. First, the administration of President Vicente Fox, who was in office between 2000 and 2006, developed a plan known as the Plan Puebla Panama, which sought to draw special attention to the development of Mexico's southern region, along with Central America. Not much came of it, however. Second, the government of President Enrique Peña Nieto, who was in office between 2012 and 2018, sought to implement a program branded as Special Economic Zones, which included, among other regions, Coatzacoalcos in Veracruz, Salinas Cruz in Oaxaca, and some of their neighboring municipalities. However, little if any progress was achieved since Peña Nieto postponed the project until the penultimate year of his term, and his decrees to lawfully declare both regions as special economic zones came too late to act upon. More recently, López Obrador deemed his predecessor's plan unfit and abrogated the decrees, unveiling instead the projects mentioned above as part of his government's National Development Plan 2019-2024, which are now part of the Program for the Development of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. All such plans have, at their core, efforts to strengthen the region's logistical and industrial profile. The Isthmus of Tehuantepec has a long and important history, it was the object of a treaty between the U.S. and Mexico, the mclean ocampo Treaty, which was never truly implemented as it was replaced by the Panama Canal project. More recently, the Isthmus has been considered strategic since it connects economic activities and southern states with consumers in the rest of the country and vice versa, and boasts Mexico's shortest distance between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean. Other features that boost the region's potential is its production capabilities, which include one refinery in Minatitlan and another in Salina Cruz, an important assembly of petrochemical firms in Coatzacoalcos and neighboring municipalities, wind farms in the Jujitan area, to name a few examples. Thus, from the government's perspective, it makes sense to anchor the region's economic and industrial prospects to upgrades in logistical capabilities. Namely, the port of Coatzacoalcos and the port of Salina Cruz, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec Railway, which links both parts and road infrastructure, including in rural areas. 
In the medium and long term, the overarching goal of the PDIT is to bolster regional economic growth through the establishment of 10 industrial parks, also referred to as development poles for well-being. The means to that objective is the Interoceanic Corridor, which, as noted, is a multimodal logistical platform whose underlying principle is to make the most of the geographical advantages of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec and, later, enhance and synchronize the region's productive capabilities, current and projected. To achieve this goal, the Government of Mexico recognizes the need for investments to shore up existing logistical infrastructure. Fundamental to the Interoceanic Corridor's objectives is the railroad that connects both ports and a handful of important cities between them, such as Minatitlan in Veracruz and Matias Romero in Oaxaca. In its Cotzacolcos Medias Agua section, both in Veracruz, a private company operates the railroad under a concession and is apparently in satisfactory working condition. However, in the second half of the rail line, which stretches 206 kilometers from Madias Aguas to Salina Cruz and comprises five sections, improvements were required to adjust curves and slopes principally. The seaport of Coltzacolcos also received investments to boost its operating capacity. In the Pajaritos Lagoon, which is connected to the region's petrochemical facilities and is part of the city's port infrastructure, the government in March 2021 completed the expansion of a pier to enable the mooring of two vessels of up to 180 meters in length, as well as the widening of an access road to the port area from two to four lanes. These works will be complemented by construction and maintenance dredging of port access channels and the projected construction of a container terminal in Coatzacoalcos. While progress appears to be made concerning the logistical component of the Interoceanic Corridor, the most challenging task will be to effectively establish the 10 industrial parks the Lopez Obrador government plans to create along the Isthmus. The reasoning is that, for regional economic development in the medium and long term, it is necessary to expand manufacturing activities, and for that to materialize, the government must put in place the appropriate conditions and incentives. This is particularly difficult given the Lopez Obrador administration's complicated relationship with private investors, many of whom are hesitant to pour money into new projects in light of a perceived unfriendly regulatory environment. Even so, a preferential tax scheme under consideration would reduce the value-added tax from 16% to 8% and the income tax from 30% to 20%. This, as well as the price of fuels, which will be offered at a discount, could lure investors to the industrial parks. The project seeks to capitalize on multinationals' desire to be closer to the U.S., as well as the periods of low water levels in the Panama Canal, as the region suffers increasingly frequent droughts. Economic Impact The revival of the railway line means that a ship could unload its cargo from one side, send it by rail across the isthmus and reload it back onto another ship on the other side, thereby providing a new route through which international freight could flow. Originally part of the Tehuantepec line, the railway was first built for the government of dictator Porfirio Diaz and was inaugurated in 1907, before the Mexican Revolution and the opening of the Panama Canal devastated the business. The multi-billion dollar project has been buoyed by Mexico's increasingly important trading relationship with the U.S., as the country has surpassed China to become the U.S.'s top trading partner. Given that America's relationship with China remains decidedly frosty, Mexico can feel secure in its new position for a while longer, so the need to carry on with this new project. Droughts are also putting pressure on the canal. In 2022, the major shipping route, which relies on fresh water for its operation, faced its worst drought on record, causing significant delays. Operators were forced to reduce the number of ships passing through the canal from an average of 40 to 32 to save water, with each shipping vessel requiring some 200 million liters of fresh water to move through the canal's locks. Mexico has spied its most significant opportunity here, the government is bullish about the new rail route's prospects, as it will offer proximity to the U.S. and a transit time of six and a half hours, excluding loading time, less than the eight to 10 hours it takes on the 80-kilometer canal. So, will Mexico's new project spell the end of Panama's canal? Only time will tell. And that's it from us today. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click on the subscribe icon below. 
Also, give us a like, share the video, and remember to turn on the notification bell for timely updates of our latest uploads. Until next time, thank you for watching.